Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dan Wilson, and you're listening to another episode of the DDon.life podcast. Just want to uh, remind everyone about 365 days of podcasting. I'm doing one every day for a year, and we're going to just see what happens. Um, anything could happen, but I think something will happen if I do it every day. Um, I don't care where it goes, to be honest, as long as I finish 365 days and I actually do it every day. That's the important thing to me at this point. I want to start out this episode with a quote out of the book Mastery by Robert Greene. And I... I don't have the book because I lent it out to a friend. And I don't think they ever read it, but they still have it. So I found a good website with a bunch of quotes from the book. And I I read the book. um, And I knew if I opened it up, I would find something to help assist with the topic for the night. So let's just start with this. We are all, in, this is Robert Green out of the book Mastery. We are all in search of feeling more connected to reality, to other people, the times we live in, the natural world, our character, and our own uniqueness. Our culture increasingly tends to separate us from these realities in various ways. We indulge in drugs or alcohol or engage in dangerous sports or risky behavior just to wake ourselves up from the sleep of our daily existence and feel a heightened sense of connection to reality. In the end, however, the most satisfying and powerful way to feel this connection is through creative activity. Engaged in the creative process, we feel more alive than ever. Because we are making something not merely consuming, Masters of the small reality we create. In doing this work, we are in fact creating ourselves. Yeah, so I think that uh, lends itself to 365 days of podcasting. Um, It's just about being involved in the creative process to try to get connection and wake ourselves up out of the daily boring grind. Um, and yeah, I think that, that that kind of really puts into perspective, you know, I think anyone can apply that to whatever they're doing. Um, <clears throat> but the point that I'm trying to make with that is that people can choose to become good at something and that's kind of what the whole book mastery is about it's about choosing what you love figuring that out and then finding someone who's a master at it and start practicing every day and he brings up the 10,000 hour rule How if you practice something for 10,000 hours, you'll start making enough connections in your brain to just basically become a master at that thing. And then even after 20,000 hours, you become like super master. But the point Robert Greene makes is just how it's your choice to choose what you want to do to figure out what it is that you'll have the passion and the drive to do 10,000 hours. So, that, I mean, it is the hard, that's the hard part is figuring it out. Obviously, if you're doing your job that you don't necessarily like, you're still going to get really good at it if you do it year in and year out, even if you don't love it. But another point he makes in the book is that how good we become at something depends on how hard we focus during our exercise. 
Um, so if you're not necessarily into what you're doing, you might have a problem with focusing fully on it. And that's definitely a problem for me. If I'm not interested in it, I have a hard time not getting distracted by something that I am interested in. And I think the internet provides that perfect distraction. So his point is just figure out what you want to do and then you have no problem being completely infatuated with it. And if you do something for long enough, you can make something special um, where other people didn't necessarily think it was possible because you can make connections with different things that you're interested in, but do it vigorously and intensely and be obsessed with it and do it for a really long time, day in, day out. So yeah, I, I think I'm trying to sort of apply that mindset to 365 days of podcasting. 365 days of podcasting is just, it's just a vehicle to make sure I practice every day. It It's not necessarily like the end product at all of what I would want. Um, but tonight... So the point is, is humans can choose to do all these amazing things, amazing feats, running amazing distances up mountains and like what Wim Hof does, staying in the ice for two hours and swimming under the ice and climbing Everest in shorts and running a half marathon in below zero Fahrenheit with no shoes. Uh, we're, we're capable of these amazing things with mental focus and practice and intention. People in all different areas of this reality, we can choose to become whatever we want in any direction we want. There's masters of everything. Anything that can be thought of can be practiced over and over again and then a master made out of that. So... This is leading me in, I think that's really special, but it's kind of leading me into my topic for tonight. So you find out about all this kind of stuff on the internet, but then this can also go in other directions. We can see things about humanity and their obsessions and their back alleys, their uh, turns they go down. Um, down their paths, they take turns into dark spaces and dark spaces on the web as well. And this is something that I came across. It's a video. I came across many, well, I came across one video and it's called ball busting and it's a fetish as far as I know. And I'm really not trying to be judgmental. I'm covering this from a point of curiosity and amusement. Um, I came across a video of a man lying on a table. And there's a hole in the table. And the table's raised up probably like six feet off the ground. And there's a hole in the table. A hole that's perfect size to squeeze his balls through. So he squeezes his balls through. So his ball sack and two balls are hanging through a hole in a table suspended about six feet above the ground. And then a girl comes in with boxing gloves. And she's wearing a bikini pretty much. And she goes under the table... And she starts hitting the guy's ball sack like a speed bag. And it's he. Uh, she starts doing it really hard. And every once in a while, she'll take a full swing and smack his balls. And they're smacking up against the wood of the table. And the guy is screaming. And he's got a gag in. So he can't talk. But he's screaming. Uh, The harder she hits his balls, the louder he screams. And this, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. This really interested me. (laughs) I I couldn't believe it. I 
I just had so many questions. My first thought is this fake. Cause it, and it definitely could be fake, but I don't think it's fake because I found out reading the comments on that video that ball busting is a thing. It's a thing. Um, a lot, there's guys that like to do it and they like to get tied up and they like to have chicks come in and kick their balls. They'll, there'll be girls wearing like high heels and they go in and the guy's chained up. His arms are chained up to a wall. His legs are chained down so he can't really move. Kind of like if he was on a rack. His legs are spread and they're chained to the ground. And his arms are chained to the wall. And girls come in and they kick him in the fucking balls over and over and over again. Hard. Very hard. They kick th these guys that like it in the balls. They sign up for it. And the, the, the girls are referred to as their mistress. And I know there's a whole world um, of this stuff. And I'm probably getting some of it wrong. But this is just how I understand it from my vantage point. And again, I'm not judging them. I think they should go down whatever path they like. But I do have questions. So before I go any further... I'm going to play some audio from these ball busting videos. And I was talking to Ken earlier and I'm just like, how, what would be a tasteful amount of audio of these ball busting videos to play for this podcast? And he didn't really know. So I just went with like 30 seconds. It's about 30 seconds total, I think. So here it is. <laughs> so that was that was the audio from the girl standing underneath the table and she was playing his balls or like she was hitting his balls like a speed bag and then at the end, you can hear her like take a wind up shot and just really smack his balls. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I have I just my main interest with this is that I'm interested in the amount of damage hap happening to the guy's balls. Um, so I do have a doctor in my family and I I wanted to talk to him about it. But I didn't necessarily think he would want to come onto the podcast to talk about this subject. So I just sent him a text and I said, hey, I saw a video of a guy getting his balls beaten or punched like a punching bag. I kind of I just explained to him what I just explained about the video to you. And he told me he didn't have the data. He hasn't looked at the data, but he imagines it couldn't be good getting your balls hit like that and kicked there's other if you're interested just google ball busting and search the videos on google and you'll know exactly what i'm talking about um but they're getting their balls hit really hard balls punched kicked stepped on uh squeezed extremely hard and it's a thing and it's not like i just like watching these videos but i am really interested in how far people are out there taking this because there's like guys out there getting their fucking balls crushed and they like it and they're making videos and they're like getting tied up and just getting their fucking balls crushed. So yeah, check it out if you're interested in it. But I'm more just interested in it from a medical perspective. And uh, he said he didn't have the data. He didn't. He hasn't looked at the data. But he knew a kid in high school that got his balls kicked really hard and they swole up and he couldn't go to school for two weeks because of it. But he did end up having kids later on. So uh, I read online that it's a, it's your balls are a lot tougher than you think they are. And there was a lot of people online defending ball busting as a totally uh, legitimate fetish practice that it's fun and it's you just can't you can't go too hard but you can go pretty hard 
and from the videos I've seen, it looks like that people are going a lot harder than uh, is safe. So I'm concerned for people getting their balls busted. I'm by no means judging them. I'm by no means saying it should be illegal. I think people should do what they want to do. And uh, I hope we can agree on that. All right, guys. Have a good night. Ddon.life. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. You can go to YouTube as well and just search Ddon.life and you'll subscribe. I would imagine you would subscribe. Thank you.